Hi, good morning class. So, for today's video, wala muna tayong camera. So, uh, didiscuss natin is intermediate accounting to notes payable. So, technically, notes payable is uh, same or similar lang naman ang treatment with notes receivable under IA1. So, same na siya, nagkaiba lang yung perspective na ikaw naman yung may utang. Noon na kasi ikaw yung nagpa-utang, ngayon ikaw yung may utang. So, ang topic na didiscuss natin or uh, mga flow natin is first paano yung initial and subsequent measurement ng mga notes payable. Next is the present value factors. Ito, di ba, meron tayong present value of 1, present value of annuity of 1, so babalikan natin sila. Next is the prepare amortization tables. Okay, so ang notes payable, so technically nangutang ka. So instead mangutang ka by word, nangutang ka with notes, with promissory note. So, sabi ko nga, yung accounting treatment dito is same na same lang din sa notes receivable. Para lang tayo nag-review ng receivable and pabaliktad yung ating approach. So, ang initial measurement, so financial liabilities are initially recognized at fair value plus transaction cost. So, technically, ang notes payable is fair value, fair value plus transaction cost that are either directly attributable to the issuance except so, kapag ang financial liability o ang isang notes payable is carried at per value through profit or loss, ang kanyang transaction costs are expensed immediately. So, in general, dapat sinasama yung transaction costs. So, except lang kapag FBPL tayo, hindi natin isasama yung transaction costs. So, ang sabi dito, fair value is the price that would be received. So, fair value, ito yung parang arm's length transaction na magkano ba yung uh, marireceive mo kapag um, nagkaroon kayo ng transaction. Kumbaga. And transaction cost, ito yung mga incremental cost that are directly attributable to the issue. So, yung mga sinasabi natin plus transaction cost dito ay yung mga uh, directly attributable lang naman sa pag-obtain uh, natin nung notes payable. Okay. So, subsequently, notes payable are measured either at amortized cost or fair value through profit or loss. So, the most common is the amortized cost or in um, gumagawa tayo ng table, amortization table. Itong fair value through profit or loss is ginagamit lang if initially ang gamit natin is FBPL. So, if FBPL, dito ka mag-flow sa um, fair value through profit or less if designated irrevocably, yung pa rin yung kanyang subsequent measurement. Yan, I think uh, yun na yung last topic dito. The rest is sa Excel na natin i-discuss yung mga samples natin. Yan, so for the first sample, note issued solely for cash. So parang, para lang siyang nag-discount ng payable. Diba sa receivable, meron tayong notes receivable discounting. So, dito rin kay payable, meron din tayong discounting. So, kunyari, uh, meron kang utang na 1 million, tas 12% yung um, pinadiscount mo. So, ibig sabihin, ang net proceeds na matatanggap mo, kumbaga parang uh, pinadiscount mo. So, i-ata uh, dito, binenta mo muna temporarily para makakuha ka agad ng cash. So, ang nakuha mong cash is uh, 880,000. So, may utang kang 1 million in total, pero meron kang um, cash lang na matatanggap na 880. Siyempre, ito, technically, parang interest na ito nung nagpa-utang sa'yo, di ba? So, ganun yung point of view sa notes receivable, di ba? Kung ano, babalik ka rin yung perspective. So, parang ito na yung interest expense nung no? pagpapautang niya sa'yo kasi ikaw itong nangungutang ngayon eh. Ayan, ganyan lang kapag uh, notes payable lang for cash lang talaga. So, present value is equal to cash proceeds. Okay, next. Interest bearing issued for property. So, ang assumption naman dito, purchase price is equal to present value equal to fair value of the property. So, example, on January 1, 2021, an entity acquired an equipment for 1 million. So, bumili siya ng equipment for 1 million, payable in 5 equal annual installments. So, uh, dito 200,000 every December 31. Interest is at 10% on the unpaid balance. 10% ng <coughs> unpaid balance. So, 
uh, bonus equipment, 1 million. So, debit equipment, credit to notes, payable. Ito yung utang niya. On the end, sabi natin, mag installment siya ng 200,000. So, installment, and syempre, magkakaroon na ng interest expense. So, how do we compute the interest expense for this case? So, technically, that is 1 million, the outstanding balance, times 10%. Okay, next. So, next year, December 31. So, ganun ulit. Actually, di ba? Magbabayad ka na naman ng 200,000. Pero, ang sabi niya kasi dito is 10% on the unpaid balance. So, ang basis na lang natin ng interest expense is uh, 1 million minus 200, which is 800,000. So, 800,000 multiplied by 10%, doon natin nakuha ang magiging interest expense sa atin na 80,000. Okay, next tayo, interest bearing yan. So next, non-interest bearing. So pag non-interest bearing, we know na na parang wala naman talagang concept na walang interest ang isang utang. Technically, meron lang siyang uh, kumbaga, imputed interest na kumbaga, nasa loob na yung interest. Okay, so cash price is equal to present value of the note issued. And um, kumbaga dito may kita mo kasi, di ba? meron siya ibibigay na kunyari na cash price. So, kunyari, uh, dito, an entity acquired for a cash price of 350 Binili mo na 500 So, technically, the difference of this is already the uh, imputed interest, di ba? Cash price less face amount. Kasi, technically, sinasabi lang niya na, oh, non-interest na yung 500 Pero kung binili mo ng cash 350 o di para ka na rin yung binigyan ng interest. So, ganun yung concept ng non-interest na mga notes. Okay. An entity acquired an equipment with a cash price of 350000 for 500000 Tapos nag-down na siya ng 100000 So, 400000 na lang yung kanyang notes payable. Equal for installments. Okay. So, on the date of buying the uh, equipment, we debit the equipment at the cash price. At the cash price. Ah. Hindi at the notes payable or what? At the cash price. Then we credit na cash for the down payment and notes payable for the balance, 400,000. So, the difference or yung balancing figure natin is 150,000. So, that is the uh, difference of the equipment or the cash price saka na itong cash and notes payable. So, technically, 500,000, ito yung total na ginastos mo minus the actual cash price. The 150,000 is the imputed interest in this note. Next, so, sabi natin, every December 31, magbabayad siya ng 100,000 dahil 400,000 divided by 4 equal installments. So, that is 100,000. And, syempre, magkakaroon ng interest expense. So, dito, for simplicity, ang ginamit niya muna is yung uh, outstanding balance method. So, ito din yung napag-aralan natin sa receivable na magkano pa by notes payable mo and ano yung fraction niya over total to get the amortization. So, that is 60,000. Ano naman kung wala pong cash price? So, hindi ko malalaman. So, paano pag walang cash price? So, cash price is equal to present value of the note issued. Diba? Sabi natin. So, kapag walang cash price, kukuha na natin yung present value of the note. So, on January 1, 2021, an entity acquired an equipment for 1 million Payable in five equal installments. The present value is uh, ordinarity and witty. So, ano nga ba ito? Baka nalimutan natin. So, present value of one, baka present value of and witty. So, pag present value of one, kapag dam sum, kasi one, kumbaga para isahan. And witty is installment. Okay, so dahil may 5 equal installment, ang binigay sa atin is present value of ordinary annuity. So, tama na ito yung gamitin natin. That is 3.7908. So, to get the carrying amount or the present value, we multiply uh, the monthly installment. So, 1 million divided by 5 multiplied by the present value factor of annuity, which is 3.7908. Okay. So, we will get present value of 758,160. Okay. Next. So, ito ay entry na muna natin. So, noong January 1, bumili ka na equipment. So, equipment natin is usually is at present value or cash price if meron, di ba? Tapos, notes payable of 1 million. 
So the difference is the discount or the imputed interest in the note. So at the end of the year, magbabayad ka ng installment na pinangako mo, which is 1 million divided by 5 is 200,000. Then magkakaroon ka ng interest expense. So this one uses the um, mabaga amortization na. No effective interest method. So, paano nga ba ito? Baka nalimutan na natin gumawa ng amortization table. So, we start off with the present value or the carrying amount of 758,160. Then, every uh, payment or interest date, so this one is December 31, magbabayad tayo ng 200,000 daw. 1 million divided by 5. Then, ang interest natin is based on the present value. Ang ating interest expense is based on present value. So, principal, ibig sabihin, ito lang yung nabawa sa principal niya. So, ang present value natin is 633,976. So, bakit pababa? Kasi nagbabayad nga siya ng payment niya na 200,000. Diba? So, technically, dapat bumababa din yung kanyang utang. So, doon natin nakuha ang 75,816 na interest expense niya for December 31, 2020. So, let's say this is uh, December 31, 2021. Then, tinanong ka, ano, magkano yung current na notes payable natin as of December 31, 2021? So, tingin tayo dito. Ang magiging uh, current liability niya is 136,60. This is the one due within a year. Okay. Next example. No cash price, pero lump sum. So, gagamit tayo ng present value of 1. Yun lang sinasabi niya, lump sum kasi. So, on January 1, 2021, an entity acquired an equipment for 1 million. Nag-down na daw siya ng 100,000. Then, the rest will be uh, issued ng notes payable. There was no established cash price and ang kanyang present value of 1. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo, ang bibigay niya present value of 1 kasi lump sum. Kumbaga, ang sabi, yung balance kasi or the balance is due after 3 years. So, kumbaga, 3 periods hindi tayo mag i Kaya present value of 1 yung gamit natin. So, kukumpitin natin. Magkano yung present value ng note? So, we will multiply the present value factor with the total amount of 1 million minus 100,000 kasi nga uh, nag-down payment na siya. So, we will get 676,170. So, ang total, ang total cost equipment will be the present value of notes plus the down payment if meron. So, yun yung 776. Okay, next. So, ang total face amount ng notes is 900,000. And the present value is 676. So, ito yung complete mo na imputed interest or the discount on notes payable. So, the entry will be debit to the equipment equal to the uh, present value plus down payment, credit sa cash for the down payment, credit for the notes payable, which is 900,000, 1 million less 100,000. So, the uh, balancing figure, pero by the way, compute through this way, is the discount on notes payable or the imputed interest in the non-interest bearing note. That is 223,830. Okay. So ngayon, every year, syempre, as of December 31, magkakaroon ito ng interest expense. Kahit hindi ka pa magbawas ng principal, may interest pa rin every December 31. So, ang gagawin natin, on January 1, ang present value natin is 676,170. So, ngayon, papa, abutin natin ngayon natin. Bakit hindi po pa zero? Kasi hindi naman siya nagbabayad. And interest lang yung binabayaran niya. Dito, uh, papuntang ngayon natin kasi yun yung babayaran niya sa dulo. So, ang ating initial interest expense is 67,617 which is technically uh, present value multiplied by the 10%. Yun yung una nating interest expense. So, yan. I think that's the last sample for amortized cost. So, May kita nyo, very similar with the notes, deceivable yung treatment, di ba? Kung baga, um, yung the way na mag-complete ng present value, the more na mag-amortize, it's all uh, the same. Nandun ka lang sa perspective na ikaw naman yung nangutang. Okay, so paano naman yung uh, other subsequent measurement, which is the fair value to profit or loss? So, ang sinasabi lang dito, KFRS 9 provides that at initial recognition, di ba, pwede tayong to profit or loss, 
pag nangyayari, transaction costs are outright expense. Then, kapag may gain or loss, di ba, napag-aralan na natin sa FDVN. Pag may gain, gain or loss, syempre, uh, papasok siya sa, um, kung baga meron siyang adjustment. So, A, change in fair value attributable. Kapag attributable sa credit risk, nirecognize sa other comprehensive income. So, dito, sabi niyo siguro, parang, makala ko ba pag FBPL, di ba ito yung inirecognize ko sa gain or loss, gano'n? So, ito, oo naman, yung remaining isa, uh, profit or loss. Pero, kapag attributable sa credit risk, take note, pag attributable sa credit risk, OCI, and itong uh, pinasok mo sa OCI, cannot be transferred to PNL. Matatransfer mo lang siya within equity or RE. So, that's all for today. Hopefully, is naintindihan natin or na-refresh tayo with notes. Kung baga kung paano initially in-measure, subsequently in-measure, how to compete for the present value and the amortization. So, thank you so much. Bye-bye.